here we are trying to explain how a total reflecting prism is used to rotate the light rays by 90 degree or 180 degree. Means the image formed by the prism can be 90 degree turned with respect to the object or can be turned 180 degree with respect to the object. Means can be inverted 180 degree. So a total reflecting prism means a right angled isosceles prism with critical angle less than 45 degree. Nearly critical angle comes 41, 42 degree range. The angles of the prism the right angle 90 degree here, the other two angles will be 45 degree because the isosceles triangle, the sides are equal other than the hypotenuse, so opposite angles also will be equal. So 90, 45, 45. A, B and B, C are equal, C is less than 45. Now, how to rotate the light rays by 90 degree? So prism. The sides should be same size. I mean, this is five centimeter. This also has to be five centimeter. Forty-five degree. Uh, D is ninety degree. C is again forty-five degree. For 90 degree deviation, the object is placed parallel to the isosceles set, one of the isosceles set. So, light rays falling normal to the isosceles side at AB, the angle of incidence is zero, the normal. The light go straight without any refraction. At AC, it is trying to escape from a denser medium to rarer medium. So the angle of incidence will decide whether it undergo TIR or refract. It's a normal. Stop angle is 45. This angle is 90 degree. So this will be 45. This angle of incidence also will be 45 degree. Since angle of incidence is 45, which is greater than the critical angle, light ray undergo total internal reflection. When reflection happens, angle of reflection will be same as angle of incidence. So the angle of reflection also will be 45 degree. So total angle or the deviation will be 90 degree. So the refracted ray after TIR from AC will be at an angle 90 degree to the incident light. This light ray meets BC along the normal, so angle of incidence is zero. No bending, no refraction, it goes straight. If you consider another light ray from the base of the object, normal, that again will go straight from AB, no refraction. Here again, angle of incidence will be 45 because it's parallel to the first light ray. It undergoes second TIR that also will be reflected straight down with 90 degree total deviation with respect to the incident light. So if we check the object which is AB, the A will come on the right side which is marked as A dash. B will come on the left side, which is P dash. The image is formed head to the left and base for the right. The importance is height of the image remains the same. Only thing is inverted, uh, not inverted, it is deviated by 90 degrees to the left. If the object is kept here on the base parallel to the hypotenuse side on the base, now the image will be turned by 90 to the right. So this is the way how an object 
the image formed by the prism can be turned by 90 degree without any change in size of the image formed. Or case two, uh, that will be the rotation of the image by 180 degree. Means inversion. By 180 degrees. There are two cases in 180 degree rotation. One is inversion with deviation means light rays feeling to be deviated from the straight direction to make 180 degree deviated image. So here anyway, it won't work by keeping the object parallel to the isosceles side. The only option is keeping the object parallel to the hypotenuse side. So you draw the prism again with uh, importance that two sides, isosceles sides has to be equal. The object is kept parallel to the uh, hypotenuse side, AC. So one light ray will go normal to the hypotenuse side. AC. This is no refraction here because it's along the normal the angle of incidence is zero. On AB, it makes an angle of incidence of 45 degree because this is 45 top A. This is 90 angle. This is 45. So this angle of incidence is again 45 here. So it is greater than the critical angle undergo TAR with another 45 degree reflection. So total deviation with respect to the incident light ray will be 45 plus 45 90. When you draw the light ray reflected, draw it parallel to the hypotenuse. This is 45, this is 90, this again 45. So here the angle of incidence again will be 45 degree. That means second TAR. After the second TAR, this is 45, this is 45, this is 45, so this will be 90 degrees. It will be just going opposed to the first incident light. So if you draw one more light ray from the bottom of the object, that also will be going parallel, exactly parallel to the first one along the normal. You will be getting reflected back from that particular point. So this uh, OB or AB, A, B, A comes as here as A dash, B comes as here B dash. So it's seen the B comes down, A comes on the top. That's how the image is formed uh, upside down. It is very clear the light is going forward, coming back. So there is an inverted image formation by deviating the light. Now, third case. Let's again rotation of image by 180 degree, case two. Inversion, but without deviation. So here we are keeping the prism with the hypotenuse as the base. When this diagram is drawn, it's better to keep same distance to the left, right, and the top. So this is five centimeter, upward five centimeter, right five centimeter. So that this line, what you're drawing, will make 90 degree with the other side. The central line we don't want, just, just taken for getting the diagram correct. You can put a dot also instead of drawing the line. Five centimeter up dot, left dot, right dot. Now in this, 
we are keeping the object parallel to the, uh, I mean, perpendicular to the hypotenuse side. This is involving calculation. So we are just trying to get an image uh, without any calculation, just manage to get the image. So just throw parallel light ray. The image will be formed upside down on the other side, same height. Since the light ray is feeling to be just straight without any deviation, that's why it's called uh, inversion without deviation. This is what I told, we managed to get the diagram. And the light ray from the top will be going uh, to the base and from the base will go to the top. Now this light ray will fall somewhere here on the base undergo TAR and will be reflected back to the base of the image. Another one fall here parallel to that and undergo TAR from here and get reflected to form the image here. So these angles both will be greater than the critical angle, this angle of incidence. It also will be greater than the critical angle. So here, since the refraction is involved, from the first phase, we need to calculate the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction. So we are not doing any calculation. We're just trying to manage the diagram without any calculations.